Hi here at Aquaclides Adventures. Hi from Alaska. The second video in our Wick Me series. In the last video, I explained that we finally got sled dogs. We got two puppies, two adult dogs, and I just showed a little bit of how our daily routine totally changed. Well, today I would like to go a little bit more into detail and what kind of dogs they are. You probably have noticed that some look pretty much like what you think of as a husky, and one looks totally different. And um, I try to explain a tiny little bit what an Alaskan Husky is. And if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. Hello from Alaska, hello at Arctic Lights Adventures and our second and definitely not last video about mushing and sled dogs. Our first video gave you an idea why we stayed off YouTube for so long. We introduced you to our new adventure, Wick Me Sled Dogs. Oh, and if you still didn't figure out what Wick Me stands for, I will tell you that at the end of the video. On our German Instagram channel, we got all kind of questions about mushing and the dogs, and we try to answer the <laughs> most common ones yeah, here as well. Very well. <laughs> but before doing so, I would like to talk a little bit more about sled dogs in general. Hop on the ATV with us and come on a training run with Lumi and Camino while we try to talk about the main athletes here, the dogs. In general, sled dog means a dog pulling a sled. So if Ari is pulling my sl kick sled or is going ski during with us, well, maybe we can call him a sled dog. But since he's only doing it every now and then and he really would love to run through the woods and have fun without pulling, nah, let's not consider him one. When people hear the word sled dog, the first thing that comes to their minds are Siberian Huskies, Alaska Malamutes, Greenland Dogs or other purebred Nordic breeds. Dogs with extremely thick fur, sometimes blue or brown and blue eyes. And yes, there are mushers out there running those beautiful purebred dog teams. Some of those breeds are especially good for hauling extremely heavy loads through deep snow. Those dogs are like tractors. But you will also see teams made up of all kind of dogs. Those dogs are called Alaskan Huskies and honestly, it is just a nice way to call them mutts. The Alaskan Husky is not a registered breed. There is no standard for their colors, fur, weight, height, ears, tail or whatsoever. The only thing that matters is, what is their purpose? If you want a long distance dog pulling a heavy load with camping gear, you probably look for an Alaskan Husky with a Malamute in it. On the other hand, if you want to compete in sprint races, you most likely find an Alaska Husky with some kind of hound mixed in. If you want to go camping a lot and have the dog outside, you also want a double coated dog with ideally a little bit longer fur. If you want to ski or shorter distances and otherwise the dog is a pet dog, the fur doesn't matter that much. Alaskan Huskies come in all kinds of sizes and mixes, but they all have one thing in common. They love to run and pull a sled. And yes, every now and then you can come across one that doesn't share their enthusiasm for the sport, those huskies will be very happy on someone's couch. Our dogs would be way too bored there. All the excitement when we get the harnesses out and prepare the ATV or now the sled, it is so much fun to watch. Each of our training runs are planned to accommodate the animal's needs and abilities. If they don't want to run or feel a little bit under the weather, they don't have to. We never make them run or make them run longer than what they want. We don't have to lure them into it, it is what they want to do.
You can see that already watching our puppies Tamo and Tyvi. They are four months old and of course don't pull a sled yet, but man, they pull on the leash like the adult ones. For a complete team, we would like to have six to eight dogs, but even two can pull me on a lightweight sled over shorter distances. We will talk about the sled and other equipment in a later video a little bit more. Probably the most important position in the team is the lead dog. With our only two adults, Camino and Lumi, well, both of them have to run lead. The former owners of those dogs both told us that they don't need another butt in front of them to run. And yes, some dogs do need another dog in front of them. I think for example of Chizik, a super hard working little sprint dog. She runs like a champ in a team position, but as soon as she is in lead, she totally refuses to go. But a lead dog must have way more skills than just running in front. When we stop the team, the lead dog is responsible for holding the line out. Otherwise it would end up in a big doggy and line knot. Also when passing other teams or being passed or having a head on, the leader makes sure that the whole team just keeps on going without any interaction. Most likely we will never really pass anyone as long as we have only two dogs, but we had several head-ons already and Lumi and Camino simply ignored the other team and kept us on the correct side of the trail. We also got questions about how to make sure they turn the right way. This goes by voice control. G is the command for turn right. Ha to turn left. Straight on or straight ahead for, well, go straight on or straight ahead. On by means just keep on going and ignore whatever is on the trail. And with whoa, you can maybe slow them down to stop them. And again, the lead dog is one to react to the commands and follow them. Both Camino and Lumi have a pretty good idea about it and they are getting better with every run we do. We have all the time in the world this winter to work with them, to bond with them, to get to know each other. They already taught us so much. Next year the biggest challenge will be to teach Tamo and Talvi what it means to be a great sled dog. Yes, that will be Camino and Lumi's job. The puppies mainly learn from the more experienced dogs. Before coming to an end, I would like to answer some questions from my Instagram community. One question was about the maximum number of dogs we want and I talked a little bit about it earlier. We definitely want six, most likely eight dogs. And whenever I mention that towards an experienced musher, they laugh at me. Most of them had the same plans and ended up with many, many more. But to be realistic when it comes to time and financial reasons, six to eight sounds like a good plan. Many people were concerned about the dogs living outside. They wanted to know whether they stay outdoors the whole winter and whether the dog houses are heated. The houses are obviously not heated, that's not really possible. The dogs have fur, they have a double coated fur and they have straw in the houses and they can easily warm it up with their body heat. When the temperatures drop to extremes, we may provide or we will provide blankets and coats for them, especially Lumi may be a candidate for that, 
um, but so far everyone is okay and staying warm. Once the, they retire from being a sled dog and or they are sick, um, we will find a nice spot for them in the house or temporary in the heated garage. The last question was about my relationship to the sled dogs compared to the golden retrievers Ari and Isla. Is the relationship different? Well, I thought about it a lot lately. In the beginning I would have said, yes, it's definitely different. But this was because I knew the Goldies Ari and Isla now for six and a half years. We got them when they were just nine weeks old and I spent almost every day with them. I know what they like, what they think, what they are up to. It's like with new friends. You like them, but it takes some time to really know them and a relationship needs time to grow. And somehow this is also true for the puppies. I'm extremely curious to see what kind of personality they may develop when they are adults. Lumi and Camino came to me as adults, both with their own personality, and I had to learn who they are. So yes, maybe in the beginning the relationship was different, but I have to say, I love them all. I hope you had fun with this training run. When you see this video, we already made the transition from ATV to SLED. Thank you for following us on this new Arctic Lights adventure. Yeah, I hope you liked this video and I hope I um, was able to explain a tiny little bit what we are doing here and what the dogs are. I decided that I will post more videos um, that gives you some information because a lot of those information are also new to us or were new to us. So if you're interested in joining our journey from being total newbie mushers to hopefully sometime being a more experienced one, then why don't you subscribe to this channel, so leave me a thumbs up and write a nice comment and watch my next video. See you then. Stay healthy, stay safe. Bye.